In this video, we'll build a simple little house using a lot of fundamental SketchUp tools. First, let's click on the rectangle. I am just going to eyeball proportions and I will scale it appropriately later. Otherwise, I could type in the dimensions that I want. The first dimension would go along the green axis, the second along the red. Now I'll push pull it up and I want to find the center of this long side. So I'm going to take the tape measure, click it on an edge and drag it until the center inference appeared. Now I'm going to draw another rectangle. I'm going to press and release the up arrow on the keyboard to lock in the blue position, draw the rectangle, and then press and release to unlock it. Then I'm going to triple click to select it all, click on move, find the center, and then line the center up with that centered guideline. Then I'm going to push pull and click on edge. I don't need this line so I'll select and delete it and then under edit I'll delete guides. Now I'm going to draw a line, once again drag until I get the midpoint inference, and notice the line is green, which means I'm drawing parallel to the green axis, and click on the other end. Then I'm going to do the same thing here, and it's red, meaning I'm parallel to the red axis. Next. I'm going to select, hold the shift key down, and you see that plus or minus? That means I can add or delete from the selection. So I've selected all those lines, and then I'm going to click on move, and move it straight up. Let me move her out of the way. So let's scale it. I'm going to select the whole thing, click on the tape measure, click at the endpoints of the wall, and I see is 4 feet 8 and 7 eighths inch. So without clicking on anything or moving the mouse, I'm going to type 10 foot symbol. Enter, enter again and I've just resized the whole house to a more appropriate height. If you want to know what the angle of the roof is, click on the protractor tool, and then click here, here, and then click it on the other end. And you can see in the text field, the angle is about 41 and a half degrees. Now I'm going to put a door in the middle here, a component door. So I'll click on the tape measure again and drag this edge over, click on the roof, and then I'm going to go to components, click on the down arrow, construction, And there are doors here. There are a lot of things to choose from. I'm going to click on Doors Low Poly. Find a door that looks good. Download it into the model. Now the handle is over on the edge, but that's okay. I can click the move onto its midpoint inference and then click it onto the guideline. 
and now I've centered it. I want to add windows to these walls, so I'm going to click on the tape measure again, and then click on the door head, which is the top of it, and then I'll get a guideline. Then I can come here and drag this edge down until it intersects the guideline, and drag this edge down till it intersects it. So I can bring in windows now and just click them to the guidelines. I don't have to measure. Let's scroll down and look for some windows. Windows low poly. Here's a double hung window. Download into the model. And the window is a group, so I can click it anywhere and it won't stick. Now I can grab this edge and click it on the guideline. And I can do the same thing over here. If I click on In Model, I'll see all the components that I've brought in. And here's that window and I can bring it in again. I don't have to go back to the warehouse. So now I've got windows. And I'm going to delete the guides again. If you want to take a look inside and do some work, I'm holding the shift key down to make multiple selections. You can right click and hide them so that you can see inside easily. And then that way you can bring in furniture. I'm going to do a warehouse search by just typing couch right in that text field. And then here's a couch. And when I bring it in, it comes in with the Move tool attached. Notice these crosses. I can click on them and rotate, as well as just move linearly. So there's a couch in there. And I can go back to edit, unhide, all. Now let's group this so that it doesn't stick to the ground, which I'm now going to create with the rectangle tool. Now that's a simple rectangle, but I want to show you the rotated rectangle. If you wanted an angle wall somewhere, like for a garden, you would click on that, and then click, and then choose the angle you want it to be. Then move up and click into place. And of course, I can always stretch it up again with the Move tool. So that's a recap of how to use the rectangle, rotated rectangle, hide, move, and the protractor.